Dr. Michael Magoha and their beautiful wife who I met. Uh, Michael, I have nothing to say. It's your turn now. There are so many people here, clergy, distinguished guests, uh, fellow mourners. If I could have your attention for a bit. Uh, I've been struggling to come here, but this time I do realize I prayed for this, and I realized he would want me to say something, so this would be for me. This would be what he would want me to tell you at this point. And uh, it might offend some, it might be boring for others, but you'll know that it's coming from him. So, uh, the first thing I keep hearing, you know this is not supposed to be a political event, but the reason is, people forget the reason why my father would say that. It's because deep down, and it has been said before, he believed everybody was the same. And he thought things like politics, tribe, all of that stopped people from being the best version of themselves. He thought that if anybody ever focused on that, they forgot on just doing what they're supposed to do and being the best version of themselves. So that's one thing I'm happy that everybody's here. And you can tell, those who remember him, those who spent time with him, they always say it, it always comes back. And for that, I'm, ready, I'm very grateful and very respectful. So that's the first thing. There are two things I have to say. There's first, there's, uh, sorry, let me calm down. So there are three types of knowledge. There's explicit knowledge. This is where somebody has to tell you directly what to do. This is what you expect all the time. Somebody comes and tells you, do this, do this, do this, and you think you'll be learning. The second is implicit knowledge. This you're not told. This you watch, you look around, and you learn what to do. You learn how to react. You learn how to carry yourself. And then the last one, which is, has really hit me of late, is tacit knowledge. Tacit knowledge, you will be told time and time again by many different people, but you don't realize how important it is until you are there at that time. And that keeps on coming. And uh, I think that was the strength of my father. It's because he was brash, he was straightforward, he was not perfect, but he taught me it doesn't matter what a person is. What matters at the end of the day is what they do. And I'll repeat the same thing that I want you to take back. He always let everybody be the best version of themselves. If he ever saw you be a bit better, he would never let you go back. He would shout at you, he would tell you this, he would challenge you. If anything happened in your life, he completely switched and tried to help you come back up. And with that, he got very many different strange friends, and I think that that's a blessing. And that's the second thing that I want to say. And the last thing which keeps on coming, is this idea of shoes to fill, etc. What's very strange is, I've known my father through many different phases. But it, it seems the one that people will remember is the cabinet secretary, because that was the last one towards the end. But I remember of all of his different phases, the things that excited him were never the position. The thing that excited him was the ability to do something. And I remember this story came to me yesterday and I, I started smiling. It was the first time the results came out and he got the call when he found out where the number one came from. And I can't remember, it was this young girl. And I remember he was with me at the time and he was so happy because it has been said here, it's because he was able to give somebody a chance. And I think that's what needs to be remembered. He believed everybody was the same and he always believed he would fight to give you the chance to do as much as you can for everyone. And I think everybody should try and remember that as we keep moving. And with the last thing, and this goes to everybody from all walks of life, anybody who's here, and this is the thing I keep hearing his voice that would be telling me to say, is, uh, uh, is right now at this point, he, he wouldn't be too happy that everybody's focusing on the man, 
he would be happier in people focusing on the deeds. He, do, he would know that he was great, but what he would say is this, and he would tell me this, I understand it's well wishes if you, t you keep telling me that I have big shoes to fill. He would laugh because he knows and, I, and he has trained me. That is not the point. The point is for me to do my best and if I see if I can help, I will try and help and make everybody be equal. I know that's my job. But the point that everybody else is missing, don't focus on him. Focus on what he would want. And what he would want is very simple. I don't have big shoes to fill. We all have big shoes to fill. This is for all of you. Wherever you go, start now. Be honest, try your best, upset people, but be forthright. You don't have to be the best person in the world. You don't have to be the nicest person in the world. But you know what you can do? You can give everybody an equal chance in whatever it is that you do. And if you do that, you will be honoring the memory of my father. So thank you all.